Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of hiatal hernia. If you want more information on this condition, including how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. So a hiatal or a hiatus hernia is a condition involving a herniation of part of the stomach through an opening in the diaphragm. So the herniation of the stomach is through what is called the esophageal hiatus. This is where the name hiatal or hiatus hernia comes from. So the esophageal hiatus is actually a hole in the diaphragm, which is a respiratory muscle. It is a hole in the diaphragm where the esophagus travels through and connects to the stomach. So in the condition of hiatal hernia, a part of the stomach gets pushed through that hole or that opening in the diaphragm, that esophageal hiatus. This condition can either be congenital, which means people can be born with it, or it can be an acquired condition. This condition is actually very, very common. It's estimated to affect roughly 55 to 60% of individuals over the age of 50, so very, very common. There are particular risk factors for getting this condition. One of them is increasing age, so as a patient gets older, they're more likely to get this condition, and the reason is is because the muscles that surround this area become weaker and loose over time as a patient gets older. Another risk factor is increasing BMI or increasing body mass index. This is where as a patient gets overweight or obese, especially having more abdominal fat, this can increase the pressure or push on the stomach, which essentially could push the stomach or part of the stomach through that esophageal hiatus to cause herniation. And then another risk factor that is related to that is elevated intra-abdominal pressure. We mentioned one of those causes of elevated intra-abdominal pressure being abdominal fat, but some other ones include pregnancy, chronic straining, which can be seen in issues with constipation that occurs for very long periods of time, and COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease where there is a lot of coughing. So lots of coughing can continue to put or increase intra-abdominal pressure over time, leading to an increased risk of a hiatal hernia. Now, the topic of this lesson is that a hiatal hernia can cause a variety of signs and symptoms and complications, and we're going to talk about those in this lesson. Now, patients that have a hiatal hernia most often are going to be asymptomatic, which means that they have no symptoms at all. In fact, only 10% of patients who have this condition are going to have symptoms from it. And those symptoms are most often going to be those of gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. And the reason this is the case is because the lower esophageal sphincter which is at the end of the esophagus where the esophagus connects to the stomach, if that part is pushed into the chest through the diaphragm, it can be weak and it can open inappropriately allowing the reflux of gastric acids. And this is why we see many signs and symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease in patients who have a hiatal hernia. So one of them is going to be heartburn. This is going to be probably one of the most common symptoms, and this is a retrosternal burning sensation. Again, you can imagine here is the lower esophageal sphincter, and if this is pushed into the chest through the diaphragm, it's more likely to open inappropriately, allowing the reflux of acidic gastric contents into the esophagus, causing burning sensation or an irritation of the esophagus. And again, this is due to inappropriate opening of the lower esophageal sphincter. Another related sign of gastroesophageal reflux disease and this acidic reflux is what we call water brash. Water brash is where the patient has excessive salivation. They produce excessive amounts of saliva. And what's also found here is that stomach acids may also be present and mix with that saliva. And this causes a bad taste in the mouth, and this may have an acidic aroma or taste as well. So because of that reflux, some of the acidic gastric contents can creep up into the mouth and cause excessive salivation and what we call water brash, this bad taste in the mouth. Other signs and symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease include belching. So patients are more likely to belch more often. And again, this is due to that inappropriate opening of the lower esophageal sphincter causing a patient to belch more often. Another symptom that can occur is epigastric pain. So epigastric pain is in this location here. So it's pain in the epigastric area, and this is due to irritation or inflammation of the esophagus and that area around the esophagus and the stomach. And patients can also complain of fullness. This is going to be more specifically postprandial fullness. So feeling very, very full after eating. And this is going to oftentimes take time for the patient to have relief. So they can feel very, very full, excessively full, and this can take time to go away or to be relieved. 
Another symptom we can see is regurgitation. This is coughing up food and oftentimes it's going to be digested food. So this is something else that can occur with a hiatal hernia. Some other symptoms include dysphagia. So this is a difficulty swallowing or feeling that food gets stuck. So we can imagine that if there's a part of the esophagus that is herniating through the diaphragm, through that esophageal hiatus, that part may cause some food to get stuck in and around it. And that can cause the patient to not only feel that they have difficulty swallowing or having things stuck in their esophagus, but this can also contribute to that regurgitation we talked about before. And this dysphagia and the regurgitation are more likely to occur in severe cases of a hiatal hernia. And then some other signs and symptoms include nausea and vomiting. So feeling nauseous may occur. You can imagine, again, if there is some inappropriate opening of the lower esophageal sphincter, there's some issues with part of the stomach being in the chest wall. This can cause some feeling of nausea and possibly cause the patient to vomit as well. Along with those signs and symptoms of reflux, the reflux itself can cause the patient to cough. This can be a chronic cough, and in fact, gastroesophageal reflux disease that can be caused by the hiatal hernia can lead to chronic cough. This is going to be a non-productive or a dry cough, so they're not going to cough up any mucus or phlegm. And again, this is due to that gastroesophageal reflux disease. And then patients can also have hoarseness, so difficulty talking, their voice can seem harsh and rough, and wheezing may occur as well. And this is due to acidic gastric contents being refluxed up and causing irritation of the respiratory tract or the respiratory system. There are particular complications that can occur with a hiatal hernia as well. These include bleeding. So bleeding can be in the form of hematochesia, which is bright red blood in the stool. So this would be a sign of a very quick, rapid bleed. And then melina can occur, and this is going to occur more often. Melina is black, tarry, and smelly stool. And it's going to be very black, and it can look like this type of color, very dark and very black in coloration. And this is actually from digested blood. So if there's a slow bleed from all that irritation, inflammation of the esophagus due to the hiatal hernia, this can cause the stomach to digest it. It can go through the gastrointestinal tract and come out as melina or black tarry stool. And because of this bleeding, this can also lead to anemia. So there can be blood losses from the hematochesia, from the melina, and from occult bleeding, which is bleeding that is not recognized. So there may be some bleeding that can occur from a hiatal hernia. And this blood loss is going to lead to iron deficiency. And then we may see signs and symptoms of an iron deficiency anemia in some patients who have a hiatal hernia, especially in those that may have other issues that are related to chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease, like esophagitis and some other complications. If you want more information on signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, please check out my full lesson on this topic. But some of the signs and symptoms are going to include fatigue, shortness of breath, and some other symptoms as well. There are some other further complications, and these are more going to be related to esophagitis that can also occur. Esophagitis is inflammation of the esophagus. These are going to include chest pain. So it's a retrosternal chest pain that may appear like a myocardial infarction or coronary artery disease. Odynophagia may also occur in some patients. This is painful swallowing due to an inflamed esophagus, which is esophagitis. And this is going to be due to chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease, chronic inappropriate opening of the lower esophageal sphincter from the hiatal hernia. And then some patients can even have hematemesis. So hematemesis is vomiting up blood. And it's going to often be red in coloration, but it can be coffee ground emesis, which is where parts of the bleeding gets digested, but then gets vomited out. So it looks like coffee grounds. This can occur as well in some patients who have a hiatal hernia, especially those that have some other complications, including esophagitis or inflamed esophagus from the hiatal hernia. And then there are even more complications that can occur in patients who have a hiatal hernia, and these include a gastric volvulus. So there can be some very, very significant findings and significant complications that can occur in some patients. But for the most part, like we mentioned earlier on in this lesson, majority of patients are going to be asymptomatic. But when they do have symptoms, they can be some of these symptoms we talk about in this lesson, along with some of the complications and some other associated conditions like esophagitis and iron deficiency anemia. If you want to learn more about hiatal hernia, please check out my full lesson on this topic, which includes how it's diagnosed and treated. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.